I was 30 years old. I, uh, I was coming back from a party. I woke up and I found myself driving on the other side of the road and a car was coming right at me. All I could see was these big eyeballs looking at me from that person's windshield about to hit his car. There's so many people I've seen that had good character, good nature, that had wealth or they had success and they felt bad that they need to bring everybody up and they corrupted that good person. They corrupted that good culture. They corrupted that good nature. See, to me, I'm not defined by my house, my car, my savings, my baseball card collection, gold, silver, stock, bonds. If God says, listen, release all that and follow me, guess what I'm doing? Peace out there, uh, vault and savings account, investment accounts. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, let's hear from Dallas, Texas. We've recently relocated here from Oak Brook Terrace, which was a downtown western suburb of Chicago, but now we're down in Dallas, Texas. But we haven't done these in a while. We've done some Q&A in the past, but uh, since us moving here, we haven't done any Q&A. So we want to respond to some of your questions, even some of your comments here in this episode. And by the way, I just want to preface a couple of things. Number one, I'm not a pastor. I'm, I don't have any formal training or education in theology or religion. I'm just simply an entrepreneur sitting in the church, reading the Bible, interpreting what God's word through the preachers, what they say to me. I interpret it through me reading my word and through my own personal Bible studies. I implement it from Sunday afternoon to Saturday. And that's all I do. I want to be fed on Sunday mornings. I want to be fed here throughout the week. And I'm just simply taking God's word and applying it from an entrepreneurial perspective through the lens of a business person, from the lens of somebody who understands that money is critical here on earth to fund and finance ministries. I've been uh, aware of many different roles in a church. A lot of them are pastors, a lot of them are choir leaders, a lot of them are deacons and, and, and lay people and missionaries. I believe my purpose in the church and the body of Christ is to be an entrepreneur to fund and finance ministries, to let God's word known in the business world and the marketplace in the boardroom. If there's people there that sadly are following God's word, but don't even follow God. Let me repeat that one more time so therefore I don't confuse you. There's people that follow God's principles, but yet don't follow God and are massively successful. And yet I find people that do follow God, they go to church, they attend, they're faithful in their prayers, they're faithful in their tithing, they're faithful in their mission. But the difference between the two, one operates in a spirit of fear, Sunday afternoon through Saturday in their job, in the business, and I want to encourage them and strengthen them through these episodes, versus the people that don't even realize they're following God's principles, and they operate in a boardroom with confidence and clarity, and they don't even realize that they are literally following God's principles, and yet they are massively successful. So I want to encourage you through these episodes, through this Bible, to start thinking like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow faith-based Millionaire. So let's take on some of your questions, uh, my answers, and I want to encourage you again, based on my answer, I don't want you to think that I have the end all be all answer to anything that we say here on this channel. I want to encourage you to take whatever I have to say, if it me it's meaningful to you, if it's it important to you, to also take this into your own self study. So therefore, you can start thinking for yourself and building your relationship with your creator. But before we get started, I want to remind you that our goal here at the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel is to get to 150,000 subs. So, therefore, we can give to a church charity or a nonprofit $5,000 from this YouTube channel, a church charity or nonprofit that you and I will crowdsource. We'll not, please nominate one. We'll pick one and then we'll give them a check of $5,000 from this YouTube channel to the church charity or ministry once we cross 150,000 subs. So, please, if you've got some in mind, please drop them in the comment section below. So, that being said, let's get started. Some Q&A. Ivan, what we got? First question, the gospel is not for sale. Teaching people that they'll become millionaires is misleading. What if they don't become millionaires? Does that mean God is failing them? <laughs> well, listen, you know, uh, everybody's got access to the Bible at the same time too. If you're, at least in the United States of America, I can talk for the United States of America, this where I've served our country, United States Marines, is where I've built a business for the last 22 years as an entrepreneur. I can say this, there's many times I've had goals and desires myself, ambitions myself. I pray, I said, Lord, if you want this to happen in my life, please uh, show me a way, show me a sign and, and, and uh, send me the clients, uh, close doors that need to be closed and open doors that need to be opened. And many times God has proven to me that even though I wanted certain things in certain area, he's closed that door and he's presented something else if I was looking. So just because you may not be hitting your goal of being a multimillionaire or being a cash flow millionaire, maybe God's trying to tell you, hmm, maybe not in that career, hmm, maybe not in that endeavor, maybe not the way you're doing things, maybe you need to pay attention to other signs that God is sending your way. 
And by the way, don't anticipate a guy's going to speak to you from a burning bush or screaming down from or booming down from like, like hey, Sam, uh, Julia, no, don't do that. No, that's not the way God talks to you, man. A God talks, at least God talks to me in circumstances, situations. You know, oftentimes you don't know what God is keeping you from to force you to seek a different direction. Uh, is many times if I've seen and experienced many hurtful things in my life that at that time were very painful financially, spiritually, emotionally, personally. And uh, I've, I've said, you know what? What is going on in the situation? And at that time, I didn't know what was going on in the situation, but I just powered through it somehow, some way. Said, okay, Lord, what are you trying to tell me through the situation? And thank God, things have worked out. I mean, I've been right away in the next seven days or 30 days or six months or a year. But as I look back on my life and to see where God has directed me over the last 22 years and the continued f uh, future direction of where he's, he's taken me, there's certain things that I've been disappointed that I personally ambitiously wanted to accomplish. But if I surrender myself, okay, Lord, what do you want me to see a situation? Because I realize things don't happen to you. Things happen for you because that's God's way of speaking through situation, circumstance. So consider that in your life. Why do some people tithe but not prosper? You know, you, you can't treat God like a vending machine. <laughs> you know, put money here and expect something out. You know, God doesn't need your money. He wants your obedience. Maybe perhaps certain situations that you're, you're dealing with, um, maybe just because you're tithing doesn't mean there's an automatic respond or, or, or receipt of goods and services or expectations delivered from God. Uh, you can't treat God as a transaction. But once I know that over an extended period of time, I say, listen, I want to give. And you want to give out at the same time too as well with the, with the feeling of, you know what? Okay, God, let me test you in this situation. Let me test you in this situation. Your word says in Malachi that uh, test me in this for I will not open up the windows of heaven, uh, right? You can't even have enough room in a storehouse to fulfill and contain the blessing I have your way. But that doesn't mean that happens in one week or one year or five years or even 10 years. It might even have, uh, take over a lifetime because where I realized with God's timing, uh, half a blink in his eyes is like 100 years. So just because it doesn't happen on your time doesn't mean you stop faithfully tithing and giving and serving the Lord. Because again, doesn't, God doesn't want you to treat him like a transaction. God doesn't want you to treat him like a consultant. God doesn't want you to treat him like a vending machine. Okay, God, I've given you money. I've given you money. Where's my blessing? That's not what God wants. He wants to see you prosper and he wants to see you pass on blessings in spite of the least that you have, that you're grateful with what you have and doing the most with the least. So therefore, he's telling you, okay, if you're done with the most of the least, now I can bless you with the most, but I need to test you with what you do with the least. So consider that. Is it about money or about doing what God called you to do with the talents he gave you? He's talking about the parable of the talents. If it was about money, why didn't Jesus chase wealth? It's not about money. Well, I got to, dis I got to disagree with you. You know, uh, talents was described back in the Bible as a, a form of exchange, a form of currency. So, uh, yes, it is about what you do with blessings. Yes, it is what you do with finances because what God has found is that people hold possessions and money uh, uh, things of this earth closer to us sadly than our relationship with the Lord or our relationship with God because we tend to be selfish at this based on our human nature. So it is based on financial resources. Can you release that and will you allow us to say, okay, God, teach me, show me what you got in store for me. But at the same time too, I'm going to release, I'm going to surrender to you. But at the same time, I'm also going to be a wise steward of the blessings you're giving based on this career, this business, this dollar, this $10, $100, this opportunity, this business, this career. I'm going to do the most with this because I'm going to glorify you in my work. I'm going to glorify you with my finances. I'm going to glorify you with my attitude in spite of me not necessarily liking what I do, but I'm looking for the blessing in what I do. And that, my friends, is a silver lining to the stewardship of handling the parable of the talents or your interpretation of it. But correct, it's not necessarily just about the money, but it is about the money because that's an area that a lot of people are attacked and sadly are bound by, sadly, with with where they're going with their decisions and with their careers. So consider that. How do you actually change? How do you want it bad enough to not give up? You believe it's possible, but I am not God. Yeah, you know, sometimes the sad part of our social media today or sad part about human nature is we, th we want things overnight. We want uh, to put in the microwave and 30 seconds later, 60 seconds later, we have popcorn. Uh, that's just not the way things work. You know, you have to go through a position of transformation. You have to go through a period of patience. You have to go through a period of 
seeking what uh, God is uh, sending your way and, and based on what you have learned and experienced and the wisdom and understanding that you have in your current life, uh, what does God teach me in this very moment? All I know is this, is that God won't give you what you can't currently handle, right? That's why he's testing you with it. And I have faith in when, when I have the opportunity to change. And it may not be the lesson. It may not be the circumstance. Or it might not be a financial situation that I want. But I'm looking through the situation. What do I do with this? What can I control? Okay, you know, the, whole, the whole thing, pray like it's up to God, but work that it's up to you. Yeah, God wants to see you grind. God wants to see you make the most of his blessings. God wants to see most of your work ethic. And sadly, people put in an hour's worth of work, a month of work, a, a year of work, and they're like, Lord, how come I'm not a millionaire yet? Because you're impatient. And God doesn't want that uh, from you. Because that is, sadly, again, back to the original context of don't treat God like a transaction. God wants a relationship with you. God doesn't want to feel like used and abused. So that is also a reflection potentially of how you handle relationships, personal relations, business relationships in your life. So again, reflect upon that. Ask, what type of relationship am I really having? First relationship I need to have with is what type of personal self-worth and self-esteem do I have with myself? What God is using me for? Because God doesn't look, want to look for a transaction with you. God wants to see you glorify Him, not just for a day, for a week, for a month, for a year. God wants to see you glorify Him for your entire life. So consider that. How do we survive or escape bad culture or outside influences? You know, in, in Proverbs, you know, it talks about good character is corrupted by bad company. So it's simply of an evaluation of the associations and the people that you surround yourself with. Because eventually, over time, if you're a good person... If you're surrounding yourself with the wrong people, man, I'm sorry. There's so many people I've seen that had good character, good nature, that had wealth or they had success, and they felt bad that they need to bring everybody up, and they corrupted that good person. They corrupted that good culture. They corrupted that good nature. So if you find yourself in a situation where I've got bad situation around me, look at the last five people you sent a text message to. How many of them are them broke or dragging you down? How many people do you send messages to? How many people do you connect with? How many social media profiles? How many influencers do you follow that actually lift you up and challenge you to the next level? Or do you just simply want to look at a YouTube channel, simply look at a mentor or somebody that's coaching you and say, okay, just please me with where I am right now and don't cause me to change. Don't make me feel uncomfortable with my scenario. Listen, the best people that have ever entered my life are people that made me uncomfortable, that called me out and up to make sure I was handling the blessings that were coming my way, although I didn't like the answer, I needed that answer. Again, back, uh, back in Proverbs, you know, the true uh, lessons learned from somebody that tells you what you need to hear are actually coming from a friend. The evil one says, yeah, continue to go down, continue to go down, and they clap you down and allow you to see, see you spiral. And uh, sadly, that's where a lot of people are. They have some form of success, but people are then using them. They're like that family member that says, let me just stay on your couch for a week. Then a week turns into a month and they're bringing their friends. So that, that's the scenario where, again, you want to avoid by being self-aware, being socially aware that you're not putting yourself in a position that your good character, your good nature is being corrupted. And by the way, that's happened to me many times. If it wasn't for my wife coming into my life, she'd say, how come you hang around that person? I don't know. I like that person. Why do you like that person? I don't know. Come to find out, I had some snakes in the grass. And because I naturally liked people, I didn't see that. That was a blind spot for me. Maybe that's a blind spot for you. So consider that hi have you always been spiritual what got you diving in faith would be nice to know a little more about the personality behind seven figure squad <laughs> no i've not always been very spiritual uh, but a, a couple major things have happened in my life number one i went to combat two combat deployments in the marines you know there, there's a saying in the military there's no such thing as, as an atheist in a foxhole <laughs> uh so my first um awareness of god of of somebody being bold enough to come and approach you was it was it was uh right off the coast of Somali Africa where this uh, uh a Navy sailor approached me as I was getting my armor together I was getting geared up to ready to go on my mission if you know anything about the Navy and the Marines and a, and a, and a, and a carrier you know, listen bro if you're a sailor if you're, you're a shipmate don't talk to me you don't talk to Marines but uh, anyway this the sailor approached me and says hey Marine if you don't come back tonight do you do you know where you're gonna end up and I'm like, yeah. I said, are you talking about heaven? He says, yeah, I am talking about heaven. I'm talking more importantly, I'm talking about Jesus. I said, yeah, I know Jesus. I'm going to go to heaven. He goes, you don't sound very convincing. I said, brother, listen, if you don't mind, I'd like to pray for you. I said, okay, no problem. You can pray for me. But I'd like to do it later on because we're, we're in the middle of uh, going from this, you know, this department to this department. We'd like to pray for you later on tonight before you go on your mission in the ship's library. 
I said, okay, no problem. You know, you can pray for me, but under one condition. The sailor shipmate says, what? What's that? I said, I, I, said, I, I told him, don't tell any of my other Marines that I'm meeting you in the ship's library to pray for me. <laughs> There's no problem. No problem. So anyway, later on that night, I go down to the ship's library. Do you know who I, do I, do I find? Do you know who I find at the ship's library? Do you know who I find at the ship's library? I find all my Marines down there. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll, uh, getting saved that night. Uh, and, and, and sad, by the way, that's the sad part because we use Jesus, we use God as a piece of body armor. Because as soon as our deployment was done, and we got back to the United States of America, a lot of us forgot our testimony. We got back into the world. We, we lost the safety of being in a military ship in a contained environment. We lost our, uh, our, our testimony in the world. So I slipped. I, I, I backslid. And so uh, the other aspect of, of me coming back to the Lord was when I had kids. I was 30 years old. I, uh, I was coming back from a party. I woke up and I found myself driving on the other side of the road and a car was coming right at me. All I could see was these big eyeballs looking at me from that person's windshield about to hit his car. I swerved left, almost hit the bus stop on the opposite side of the road, swerved back right, parked, and I asked myself, what are you doing? At that time, you got three kids, you're a single dad, you're supposed to go home to the kids. You know, you could have gotten killed this morning. Worse, you could have killed somebody else. You have, you, you have an orphan three kids. And so at that moment, I picked up an invitation I had from somebody who was inviting me to church, and at 8.30 that morning, still smelled like alcohol, I, t- I think I typed... I took like a 30 minute nap. I went to church and I told God that day, I said, you know what? I tried it my way for 30 years. Now let me try it your way. And for the last 16, 17 years, I tried it God's way. I fought and wrestled with God because I've had to change. I've grow. I've had to transform. Um, I still remember the, the areas where I've, I'm weak at. And you know, thankfully I look back now because of the brothers I've surrounded myself with and the experiences that I've had through strengthening my faith, that those situations don't uh, uh, bother me that much more any of these I have new different levels of challenges and uh, expectations for my life of where God is leading me and where God is taking me but at least I have the infrastructure to know that I can play financial offense and spiritual offense because I've been equipped myself with the word you know Ephesians the scripture talks about putting on the armor of God you know the the helmet of salvation the boots of peace right the shield of faith the sword of the spirit these are things today that I know to armor myself up with because I know as soon as I walk out of this door, the enemies, the circumstances, situation will come to attack me through my phone, through email, through text messages, social media. I know things are going to attack me. So if I don't have my armor of God on me to operate as a spiritual warrior, as a financial warrior for Christ, for God, then I know I'm just going to get attacked. So you're right. I wasn't a spiritual, but I bought into a set of values and principles that I knew with transcend the test of time through human the humankind history versus me just thinking i'm just gonna be a good person today which is not good enough because i am flawed human nature is flawed and again i need to rest my future and by the way i could be wrong i got i still got questions about my faith i still got questions about my relationship with god i still got questions excuse me for being human but there's times i wrestle with the lord there's times i i don't agree with god there's times i don't agree with with what i feel uh, circumstances are coming my way and I'm still growing through it. So don't think I've gotten it all figured out. Don't think that any pastor here on earth has got to figure out. They're still human too as well. And that's why I said at the beginning of this video, consider our opinions are in our perspective of it. And you find out your scenario based on your relationship with the word, based on your interpretation of how God is leading you. That's why it's called the living word. So my brothers, my sisters, whoever asked that, please consider that. The most powerful message I've heard so far in 2021. If you're reading this, what is the one Bible verse you'd apply today to change your life? Listen, the best Bible verse that I've seen to apply in my life was uh, Psalm 23. Because uh, every time I think about Psalm 23, it's, it's talking about you going through the valley of the shadow of death, that you shall fear no evil, right? That his wrath and his staff comfort you. So therefore, in spite of your circumstances, in spite of your situation, uh, God can transform you and change you. But at the same time, he's also going to protect you. If you submit to his will, if you submit to his, uh, to your obedience to him. And so, listen, I don't have any extensive scriptures. You can find so many scriptures here about change and change and, inf- and transformation and a lot of information in that regard. But uh, I'm just, I rest upon that scripture because during the most trying times of my life, I've read that scripture over and over and over again. Uh, Psalms 23. So consider that, my brother or sister. Isn't Christian millionaire an oxymoron? Didn't Jesus say that it's basically impossible for rich people to enter heaven? It, it, it's not an oxymoron because that is a religious and Christianese interpretation of the scripture because what God is saying, listen, if you say, okay, I'm rich, but are you willing to surrender your wealth? 
See, to me, I'm not defined by my house, my car, my savings, my baseball card collection, gold, silver, stocks, bonds. If God says, listen, release all that and follow me, guess what I'm doing? Peace out there, uh, vault and savings account, investment accounts. I'm giving it to somebody and I'm following him. But it should not be an oxymoron because in the meantime, as a king in the marketplace, remember there's priests and kings and queens. If you feel that you're a king and queen in the marketplace uh, uh, versus being a priest or a pastor, or a, a worship leader, right? There's, there's many different roles in, 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 the, in the church of God and the body of Christ. I've just taken on my mantle to say, listen, my role is necessarily is in a pulpit on Sunday mornings. My pulpit is how I express myself in business as an entrepreneur, as a father, as somebody in our community, Sunday afternoon through Saturday night. That's my, that's my pulpit. That's my example. It's just not on Sunday mornings. And so it should not be an oxymoron. That's old uh, teaching. And sadly, there's so many people there. It just blows my mind away how many Christian people think that they should be broke. There's so many Christian people out there that should be weak. Meek does not mean weak. Jesus was meek. Jesus was not weak. There's a difference between weak and meek. And so when you're looking at yourself and, and saying, okay, I'm looking at the way Christian people are, they should be wealthy. Why not? They're, listen, uh, uh, in Scripture it says, the Lord delights in the prosperity of His people. Deuteronomy 8.18, God has given you the power to create wealth. Now, He's given you the power. Now, it's up for you to do something with that power. Not to say, oh, should I not be rich? Which sadly, if you're not taught about it, which sadly is like, am I just being lazy about my blessings? Am I being lazy about my money? Am I being lazy about... Uh, what's going on, which is probably the saddest thing right now because we, uh, as entrepreneurs, as uh, people that take risk to create a business, that take risks to invest in things, we don't wait for anybody else to give us a check. But what's being sold in America today? Don't work, but the government will give you a check. <laughs> but yet scripture says, listen, God worked for six days straight and then he took a break. God created the heavens and earth, separated seed from land, etc., etc. He worked first and then he rested. What is the government, the United States government trying to sell us today? Don't worry about working, we'll send you a check. So there's a very dangerous message that's being sent out today. And again, I am following a value and principle that stood the test of time, not based on current human knowledge, because current human knowledge can be flawed. So therefore, I'm putting my trust and faith. In words and values and principles that again stood and has stood the test of humankind. So consider that. So that one actually matches up with this next one. Hi, I'm 19 year old Christian and I feel so guilty to have more money than I have now. Can you guys please help me somehow overcome this? I'm a really big hearted giver and love giving to other people so much. I fear to be rich or to get more money in my life. Yeah. Yeah, back, back, back to what I was just saying earlier. It's sadly, there's been a sad stereotype in a belief system in the Christian faith that you should be broke. You know, if I want to reference a, a video here in a, a long form interview we did with Rabbi Lapp, and as many of you may or may not know, uh, the Old Testament is filled also with uh, Jewish knowledge, uh, old wisdom. So I tapped into Rabbi Lapp and to help me unpack some of the books of the Old Testament to help us understand that God wants you to help other people, that you are bound to the servitude of other people, not to say the servitude of yourself, but the servitude of your neighbors, the servitude of people in your community. And in so doing, you benefit individually, but first you have to benefit other people. So if you feel in your heart that you want to be rich to serve other people, well, God bless you, man. I want you to continue to do that. Uh, that is the purpose of this YouTube channel to make sure you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow, faith based millionaire. So the difference is who you're surrounding yourself with, who you're listening to, who you're who you reading scripture with, and uh, who you let unpack these type of parables and, and uh, uh, teachings. Uh, so therefore you are empowered to do what God has placed in your heart and more importantly your spirit to be a bigger and greater blessing to other people. So my friend, whomever you are, I'd love to see you as a 2021, as a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. So continue to march and consider that. I would love to meet other faith-based businesses to uplift each other. Where are they? By the way, if you're a faith-based entrepreneur right now, if you're a faith-based 
cash flow millionaire drop your business and link in the comments section below. i'd love to get to know who you are maybe we'll create a catalog of all the faith-based business people out there millionaires out there entrepreneurs out there so please put your business your link your website in the comment section below your instagram whatever you got put it in the comment section below if you're a faith-based millionaire, cash flow millionaire i'd love to get to know you too as well but i know there's very few uh conferences across the united states of america that do assemble entrepreneurs to get together do, do assemble for people for financial stewardship classes so please seek your local church and see if they have a small group that will help you understand the financial perspective of financial stewardship and entrepreneurship based on godly perspectives values and principles if your local church does not have it again we're going to reference this uh, uh this comment section here to find other faith-based millionaire too as well i'm looking forward to get to know you guys and by the way th does it make sense for us one day to put together seven fear squad conference does it make sense for us to put together a seven figure squad live event where we have a two and a half day uh, conference? And by the way, it, it will be a charged event. It's not going to be a free event because then it's going to cost money to rent out a venue and, uh, and, and cost to rent out a conference center uh, or hotel or conference area. It's not going to be it's not going to be a free. Uh, by the way, that's the sad part, too, about being a Christian faith based millionaire. Everybody thinks that everybody expects, oh, you know, you should be very charitable. No, no, things cost money. So therefore, if we do put together a seven figure squad, uh, event it is going to be a paid event it's not going to be cheap but at the same time too i know it's going to be worth it based on what you're going to learn and the networking that you're going to have so uh, again if you're a faith-based millionaire entrepreneur put your info website instagram in the comment section below this was on time i'm glad god brought this up on my feed also is there a place that we can suggest a church to give to once we've reached your goal of subscribers yeah i mean if you have a local church that you go to and they may potentially have a financial ministry or an entrepreneur ministry. We'll have to consider them to receiving a blessing from this YouTube channel. Of five thousand dollars or a piece of five thousand dollars will help them expand uh, a financial teaching of the Bible, a uh, entrepreneurship teaching from the Bible. Uh, but yeah, if you have a local church or a charity that you love to support, again, put them in the comment section below. We'd love to get to know them. We're crowdsourcing it right now. We're assembling uh, um, a list of potential uh, church charities and nonprofits. We're going to be awarding five thousand dollars to once we reach. 150,000 subs, so we love to get to know them. Well, there you have it. There's a lot of questions from you guys, and I'm sure I can spend another one, two, three, four hours. I think that's why we really do need a some form of podcast. My team's been asking me to form, form a podcast. By the way, would that help you guys out if we did a podcast, a seven-figure squad podcast? Uh, again, if, if this is something we're going to do, um, it's going to be a three-year commitment for me and a, a commitment of financial resources to do so because I just don't want to do things uh, cheaply. I want to do things professionally to represent God's kingdom, to represent... Uh, you know this this important mission that we're on to help inspire a generation of faith-based entrepreneurs, of faith-based cash flow millionaires, to be a bigger and wiser blessing to our local uh, and greater communities today. So um, again, I want to know what you guys are thinking here in the comment section. Any feedback? Any follow-ups? Any other questions that you might have for future episodes when we do more Q and A? Does it make sense to have a podcast? Put it in the comment section below if you think if you think it makes sense. And before I wrap up, guys, there's a couple Q and A's here. I want to reference you to as well as I answered off the cuff some of the questions you had here from the comment section in our youtube channel and again to remind you our goal is to get to 150,000 subs and once we do so five thousand dollars will be awarded to a church charity or nonprofit that uh, you help us crowdsource and that you help us nominate to receive that five thousand dollars so that being said guys if you haven't done so already if you're watching this on facebook make sure you click like follow our facebook page money smart guy and if you're watching this on youtube make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. I'm one smart guy from Dallas, Texas. And until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart, and be money smart today.